Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm painting Blossom Time, one of my favorite china patterns. And I'm going to show you guys how I did this step by step. I'm just going to put out there right now, I'm currently looking for the matching teapot to this teacup set. I'm just going to put it out into the universe and hope that somebody watching right now may have a teapot or know where I can get one. Uh, if you're willing to part with it or sell it, just let me know in the comments below or send me a private message. So it's so pretty and I was wondering what to paint today and then as I was sipping my tea, I thought, why not this? So we're working on an 11 by 14 primed canvas today. I've just primed it with regular acrylic paint over an older painting. Here are the colors we're using. I'll list everything below as I always do in the description area using a mop brush, medium sized mop brush. I'm going to begin with the sky. So it's a beautiful light blue violet with titanium white and I'm just going to have fun with my brush and just do this very relaxing and delicately. I'm really wanting to enjoy the process of painting something that I love so much and brings me joy. So as you can see by looking at the china pattern there's not a lot of blue so I'm going to add just a little bit more because I'm painting on a larger surface. So I'm just adding it in little sections and then right on the horizon line here just a little bit for our perspective making it look like there's just rows and rows of all those beautiful cherry blossom trees that go way way back there in the distance. And cherry blossoms are one of my favorite flowers that are that bloom in the springtime. I just think they're so pretty and fragrant. Any any tree blossoms, fruit tree blossoms are quite lovely. We recently just planted a nectarine tree in our yard and an uh, apple tree with four varieties. So we're going to get some beautiful, uh, hopefully get some beautiful um, blossoms next spring. I've got my flat brush now. I'm using a large flat brush. It's number 11 and I'm starting to make my light green tones. So I've got a warm yellow green acrylic paint that I'm using. Um, I guess I should mention that too. If you're new to my channel, I do only art tutorials in acrylic paint and I'm mixing that warm yellow green with my titanium white for my very very light tones here. I eventually will be adding gold, my metallic gold, uh, because if you notice on the teacups at the base and on the handle there's a little rim and ring of uh, gold on there so I wanted to um, add that and incorporate that in the painting somehow and what better way than to use my favorite gold metallic paint and it's just going to be a few little hints of it here and there. Um, mostly at the end is where you'll see those shiny little flecks of gold um, but here in the foreground I'm going to be mixing my gold with my white and my green so it won't really have that shimmery uh, look to it because I've mixed it with my regular acrylic paints um, but I used it for color instead of going into my my yellows I wanted to use the gold so here you can see I'm gonna make um, a different tone with my white and my gold really really soft next to that green over part of the green in some areas and we're gonna leave the pathway white just as it is on my teacup or the saucer. I'm going to wash my brush off now and go back into my light blue, violet and white. A little bit of magenta and I'm going to make a soft purple color for the trees and the bushes back here in the distance. I'm just going to start tapping in with my flat brush now and then I will come in with one of my little mop brushes after to get the nice soft poofy tops of those little bushes and trees. Okay so here I'm using my mini one taking some more white, a little magenta and the blue violet. I'm going to tap lightly. I'm going to use more white and magenta this time to bring out the pink a little bit more. Now I have red on my palette 
just in case I couldn't get the, the right shade of pink that I wanted with a magenta, but I tried both and I actually prefer the magenta with a white um, to the cadmium, or actually it was crimson red, and maybe it's because I was trying crimson red. Um, if I had used cadmium red, maybe I would have liked it better, but I'm very happy with the magenta. Um, you can also use uh, any pink that you want or have, um, as well as quinacridone violet. It's really, really similar to the magenta. So I've got my little flat brush here. It's a quarter inch or half inch, I should say. And uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just use the size that works best for you. Obviously this is a smaller painting, so you want to use something a little bit smaller. It's easier to uh, maneuver and create all these little brush strokes with. So I'm just adding little bits of detail on either side of the path. And then there's a little bit of grass right here in the middle so we're just going to lightly pull and flick using sap green and then uh, kind of alternating and blending with uh, little bits of gold eventually and my warm yellow green and i've got my fan brush my mini little fan brush here that's so handy to use i'm going to take water that you don't see but i dipped my brush in water this will help me be able to flick that paint out really easily and create little bits of grass here and there and I'm going to start coming in with my shadows for my trees and we're going to add like the base of the trees where they're going to start and where those shadows kind of just fall on the grass. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up, wash my brush out, and then I'm going to switch over to a medium size filbert brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white with just a little bit gold, and I want to have a light area in between that bit of pink and the green grass. So what I'm doing is kind of just, it didn't work to add the white over top because the paint underneath is not quite dry yet, so it kept blending in. So what I often do, and you guys will recognize this from my other tutorials, I gently scrub off the layer of paint, exposing the white canvas uh, and white paint underneath. So it's a really easy and fun way to add some highlights or white bright areas to your paintings by simply just gently scrubbing that other top layer of paint off. And I just want to have a little bit more uh, variation of brush strokes in here for little bits of grass and maybe there's clovers down there. Um, so using this brush and the flat brush earlier plus the little fan brush, I can achieve that using changing my brushes around. And now I'm going to have another layer, looks like bubblegum pink, it's so pretty, it's just that magenta with titanium white and I'm just going to tap around, turning my brush a little bit. So I change the direction of those branches for those treetops. Just want to wipe off the excess paint and then I want to add a little bit more of that pinky color right here and just Kind of fine tune this shape a little bit so that it matches uh, better to that saucer in which I'm painting from. So if you're just tuning into this video now, you guys, I am doing a step-by-step -step of my favorite china pattern, uh, Blossom Time. I've switched over to my smaller, smallest filbert brush that I have, and I'm taking that combination of magenta and white, and I'm gonna tap in the indication of some loose and fun little cherry blossoms up here on the top right. So don't get lost and intimidated by thinking you have to do every single petal and everything up here has to look like a perfect flower. You really do not have to do that, guys. For years, I would stress about making every petal 
in a painting look perfectly just like a flower but it's not what it's about it's about how you see the painting in a whole and from a distance and it all just comes together um, somewhat impressionistically and if you're working on just one flower in a painting and it happens to be close up then yes of course you're going to want to have a little bit more detail um, but in a painting like this where everything's kind of farther away and the cherry blossoms are in such masses and clumps you really don't need to do that so just enjoy the process and tap in colors and highlights and shadows where you see them using the appropriate size brushes too really helps so now I'm coming in with a liner brush with both greens maybe a little bit of white and just tapping in for some greenery and leaves around these little cherry blossoms And I'll be building up the tree trunks using my liner brush. I'm gonna mix, uh, for my branches and my tree trunks, mix my red magenta, alternating sometimes magenta and sap green, sometimes the crimson red and sap green. I'm going to start with these small ones way in the distance and they're just little lines so I'm going to look closely at the pattern and try to replicate that normally I wouldn't do this and I would just end up doing my own thing but in this case I really wanted to have a matching painting to my teacup set and as I put out there before I am desperately trying to find the matching teapot to this so please leave me a comment below or connect with me through one of my uh, online platforms, Instagram, Facebook, uh, my website, and here. So I'm gonna do a few larger trees closer to the foreground, and I'm using those same colors, red, sap green, and then a little bit of white just to add for highlights. And I'm not waiting for anything to dry first. I'm totally doing this layer upon layer while everything is still wet. But acrylic paint, as you know, does dry quite quickly so I don't have to worry too much about picking up those colors in the background because they are it's a thin layer that I did there or thin layer so they are drying uh, quite quickly but if you do pick it up it really doesn't matter these trees are those ones are way way back there so if you pick up a little bit of uh, the blue violet or the magenta it's totally okay it's all still gonna look good as long as you can still see a few little lines So again, just using my little liner brush, a little bit of white, pulling little lines, creating slight pattern for the bark on these tree trunks. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on the other side. So we'll add a few more trees and then we're going to come in with some of our long dramatic branches that are just going up and then reaching over in a dramatic arch towards the center of the canvas. I love painting trees and branches that do that. And you'll notice that I am skipping some areas. I won't be doing branches on every single tree because I don't need to. You don't see them in the china pattern that I'm painting from. I'm only adding them where I see that they are. And then I come in uh, between everything with a little mop brush and all my flowers and then leaves after that. Just gonna make this a little bit thicker in some areas and thinner in some areas blending around with my little filbert brush. So I'm actually really enjoying working on this painting and I'm dying to see your guys' um, interpretations. So please share them with me over on Instagram. I love to see all of your guys' paintings from my tutorials. It really does make my day. 
I'm coming in with another mop brush now. I've got a collection of these. These are, um, if you guys have been watching my videos the last little while, I purchased these on Amazon and they're makeup brushes and they're so great to use because they're super soft. So you get a really nice soft texture and brush stroke when applying this paint. So again, I'm using my magenta and my titanium white and I'm just gonna look carefully and closely at my china pattern on my little plate and try to replicate that. So wherever I see some a little mass, so they're like individual little little masses, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna apply them there, leave the spaces in between where I'm gonna have uh, a white highlight and um, some leaves. And then I'll just continue to build this up. I'll be adding a few more branches. I'll be using a liner brush for some small little dabs on the end of those branches that are like reaching over in an arch. Okay, so here we go with my mini, my tiny little mop brush that I love so much. It's so much fun to use. I'm dipping in or tapping into my titanium white and I'm going to start to layer on the top portion of each one of these little bushes or little masses of flowers with white highlighting them and I'll eventually add more white towards the end. Um, to make it really bright because as you can see over on the little saucer there that it's quite bright there's quite a lot of white going on in between all of them so I have to wait for these layers to start uh, setting in and drying a little bit before I can add that white over because every time I do it just keeps picking up and uh, mixing in with a magenta underneath You kind of want it to get to an in-between stage, so you don't want it to be 100% dry before adding um, your final highlights uh, because then it's kind of like dark and light and there's no in-between. Um, when you wait for it to dry just a little bit or just enough, then you're able to apply the highlight, um, but then you still get a little bit of uh, mid-tone in there. It's, it's kind of picked up and tapped into the wet paint underneath a little bit. Um, this also helps if you don't have a super, super thick layer of paint. So you don't want an extremely thin layer of paint, but you don't want one that's really, really goopy and thick too. Um, the most common mistake my students use, and this is over a course of 10 to well over 10 years I've been teaching now, Everybody tends to use way too much paint when beginning to paint. So that is uh, the best advice I have for you guys today. That's my biggest tip is don't use so much paint. Um, less is more. And if you need more, you can always add more. But what are you going to do when you have too much paint on there? It's such a waste to take it off, right? Um, I do take thin, thin layers of my paint off to expose the canvas underneath, but that's like really, really thin. So I'm not really wasting anything. Um, so here I'm just adding in my little bits of green now, and I'm really happy with how this is coming together at this point. I am really excited that I decided to do this. It's not something that I planned out. I hardly ever plan out what I'm going to paint anyways, but this is so different for me. I've never tried to do this before. and. Um, it's kind of just making me think more outside of the box than I have been lately and I really have been doing a lot of different stuff lately between all my cityscapes and uh, aerial views um, this is just something to add to that so I hope you guys are having fun on my channel and expect the unexpected from me all the time I don't ever want you to get bored I want you to constantly be uh, inspired and motivated and excited when you come onto my channel if you have not subscribed yet to my channel, please go ahead and do that because it helps my channel grow. I need subscribers to stay in the YouTube world. It's how YouTube works. So every time you comment, every time you give my video a thumbs up, every time I get a subscriber, YouTube values that and will keep my content on ongoing. So it's, it's, you know, I'm really counting on you guys out there to do that. So thank you in advance. I appreciate it so much. I'm going to add a lighter layer of green in now by taking my titanium white with my warm yellow green. And it really, this green I love to use especially for springtime scenes because it really is that fresh 
beautiful springtime that's what it should be called if I was to name this green I'd call it springtime green because uh, it's just so nice and bright and spring like and happy this painting makes me happy and it really does feel like spring and happy times So I'm going to add a sap green where I want to have some shadow for my leaves. Just little dots and dabs. It's really all there is to it, you guys. Not out for a ton of detail here. It's how it all comes together. So I just want to tidy up around the pathway and the edges of the grass where the tree trunks are, cleaning it up just a little bit, adding more highlights where I need to, just using my little filbert brush here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this and then I'm going to apply the rest of the branches and the last few details to my cherry blossoms. I'm so caught up in this painting and tutorial for you guys. I was having so much fun that uh, I let my tea get cold. So after this, I, I don't know if you guys are like that too when you're creating a piece of art or whatever you're doing that you love to do. Time just flies. You forget every, about everything else. I can go hours and hours without needing anything or, you know, eating or anything like that. I just, I get lost in it. So I've got my long liner brush right now and I'm taking those colors again, sap green and red, just to make a brown color. So you don't have to go into your uh, tubes of paint and specifically find a shade of brown unless you want to, but it's not necessary when we have all these colors on our palette already. I'm gonna re-highlight now that I can add this nice highlight again and it's really gonna show up. So I have my darkest magenta, I have a light kind of bubblegum pink, and now I have that light white color. So we've got that in-between color, that mid-tone. That's what you're after. You don't just want light and dark. You don't want it to be too drastic. You want to have those soft, gradual mid-tones so it, it gradually gets, t gets dark to light. It's like ombre. So I usually like to sell my paintings and I'll advertise on Instagram or Facebook um, just to let you guys know because I do I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys asking where you can purchase my art um, but this one this is a rare occasion where I, I'm actually going to keep this one I love it so much and <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna put it my walls are are full of art as you can imagine my daughter's an artist and my mom's an artist too so I've got quite a collection of of artwork but I have to find a spot for this in my kitchen next to my my little teacups and I'm thinking um, I'm gonna take it to uh, the framers and get a beautiful soft gold frame for it and I will show you guys when I get it framed so you can see what it looks like and how pretty it is I might get some prints done of this I'm not sure uh, let me know if you guys are interested in any more info about this pattern and possible prints or books bookmarks uh, that I might make from it so I'm gonna add uh, some more shadows here that are falling from casting down on the grass from the tree trunks but they're a little bit too dark I don't want them to be the same color as the tree trunks themselves the shadows should be a little bit um, not so what am I trying to say not so thick so uh, kind of see-through uh, so I'm just gonna go over with a lighter green and maybe take a little bit of that off and I'm gonna add the final little branches in here 
And then I'm going to add the gold. And I think that's like my favorite part. It just really ties this all together. Like I said, there's that ring of gold uh, on the bottom, the base of that teacup and a little bit on the handle and uh, it's super shiny and I've got a really lovely gold metallic paint that I'm going to use full strength I'm not going to mix it with anything and add little lines and dabs of that for the tree trunk and for some of the branches and you'll see what that looks like here in a few seconds at the very end of this video I think it's almost done And so what happens is when, uh, yeah, it's so pretty. What happens is when the light hits it a certain way or it, if I move the canvas around, um, whatever the light is like in a room, it can really influence that shine and that shimmer. And that uh, kind of brings uh, some extra life to a painting. And when done and added uh, tastefully, it's definitely not tacky at all to do this. Um, I feel the same way about um, gold leaf, copper leaf, uh, rose gold leaf. I should do um, some tutorials on how to incorporate that into paintings. I haven't used it in quite a while, but what I used to do was apply gold leaf to my canvas and then paint over top of it. And it is pure magic, you guys. It's But there's a, a real technique and know-how of how to apply it properly and what to put on in between your acrylic paint and that gold leaf so let me know if you guys are interested in learning more about that and if you're not even sure what I'm talking about there's some YouTube videos on it and you'll see how pretty it is it's gold leaf acrylic painting and there's lots of different leaves you can get the the silver leaf um, rose gold leaf is one of my favorites okay you guys so I think this painting is all done. I just want to have a look at my little pattern here. I think it all looks really pretty together. I can't wait to get this framed. Um, more importantly, I can't <laughs> wait to find a matching teapot. I hope you guys will help me do that. Thanks so much for joining me today. I wish you happy painting and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time really soon in a brand new video. Bye!